Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Getting a nose here on the new studio as we go. At any moment, you never know, the, the nose could creep in. Guys, a new studio on the way. Uh, there's going to be graphics and everything up, uh, all by people who donated to The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. People like the really core cool Angela. All right, friends, we are going to venture in here to the uh, the news of the day. Your mic. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, I just have it away so I don't keep hitting it. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, Prison Planet, report. J.P. Morgan Chase bans storage of cash in its safety deposit boxes. Um... For those of you that don't know, the most successful thing probably that I've ever written is an article called News from the Science Front. And I'll, uh, news from, I'm thinking of the other show that I'm doing. That's popular too, the uh, News from the Science Front. No, the, uh, the single article, I should say, not series of articles. The uh, single most successful article I've ever written. It's called How to Live Without Banks. And you can see it at TheMediaSpeaks.com. It's free. Go read it. I do it every day. I know that it works. It's how you live without banks. It's how you invest without banks. It's, it, it's, I'm going to have to read it someday for everyone to download, but look it up. Well, they know that people are doing this because we don't trust them. Why would we keep money in a bank after Cyprus? Why, why would we do that when we know that our country is uh, on a very very bad road right now. Our money is being printed at astronomical rates, which is what led to the fall of the Weimar Republic, which uh, is one of the things that led into World War II Germany. It, the same money practices are happening now. Well, listen to this. Some J.P. Morgan Chase customers are receiving letters informing them that the bank will no longer allow cash to be stored in safety deposit boxes. The content of a post-war over the Collector's Universe message board, as a link for that, suggests that we may be about to see a resurgence of the old-fashioned method of stuffing banknotes under the mattress. Again, what, what right does the bank have to say what you put into your own safety deposit box? That should not be the, uh, the whim of the bank. Are you feeling me here? My mother has SDB at a Chase bench with one of my siblings as co-signers. Last week they got a letter outlining a number of changes to the lease agreement, including this. Contents of the box, you agree not to store any cash or coins other than those found to have a collectible value. Another change is that signatures will no longer be accepted to access the box. The next time they go in, they have to bring two forms of ID, and they will be issued a four-digit PIN number that will be used to access the box then and in the future. Why, pray tell, would you put your money into an institution that put rules like this in? First of all, it's not their damn money. Second of all, if you are paying for the safety deposit box, then what damn right do they have to say what you may or may not put into it? says the letter entitled updated safe deposit box lease agreement was sent out to customers at the beginning of the month so you want to get out of uh, the banking institutions especially a Morgan here it says hide your wallets the banksters are on the move warns correctly I should say the economic policy journal as of last month Chase has also inst instituted a new policy which restricts borrowers from using cash to make payments on credit cards mortgages, equity lines, and auto loans, writes Professor Joseph Salerno of the Mises Institute. Again, that's why you want to use money orders. Um, it says, the news arrives on the back of comments by City's Wilhelm Buter, who recently advocated abolishing cash altogether in order to solve the world's central bank's problem with the negative interest rates. In other words, if you don't have cash, then you're going to have to, according to their reasoning, put your money in a bank then they will charge you to have your money in the bank in what's called negative interest where they get paid from your money as they loan it out and get paid from your money again um, what's one way around this I'm sure if they do this well, I'll be supportive of going back to a gold silver copper uh, that, uh, currencies uh, you're gonna see a lot of that people will be getting around it that way because 
people, I hope, will not go for this in the numbers that they're going to try to force us to. It says, last month we also reported on how the Justice Department is ordering bank employees to consider calling the cops if customers who withdraw $5,000 or more. Efforts to impose restrictions on the use of cash by banks are seen by many as an attack on anonymity and an example of how financial institutions are positioning themselves to handle the fallout of the next economic crash at the expense of customers. In other words, when, when the next time a crash happens, they're going to do what's called a haircut. They are going to take your money that is in the bank that you think is insured. They're going to take that money and they're going to use it to fix the economy or to fix the too, fix the too big to fail whatever it is that week. Get your money out of the damn banks. According to the reports which emerged last year, it says HSBC is now interrogating its account holders in the UK on how they earn and spend their money as well as restricting large cash withdrawals for customers from 5,000 euros upwards. In other words, they shouldn't have had it in the bank to begin with. Banks in the U.S. are also making it harder for customers to withdraw and deposit cash, with Chase imposing new capital controls, controls that mandate identification for cash deposits and ban cash being deposited into another person's account. In October of 2013, we also covered policy changes instituted by Chase, which banned international wire transfers while restricting cash activities for business customers, uh, both deposits and withdrawals, to a $50,000 limit per statement cycle. As in other words, they don't want other people to put money into your bank. They want you to have to pay to do it. They want to be able to monitor everything that you do and why you do it. If you don't want this, then don't bank. I have it for years. It's really easy. It says, last month, French Finance Minister Michael Sapin hailed the introduction of a measure set to come into force in September, which will restrict citizens, the French citizens from making cash payments over 1,000 euros. Um, I want to get on to this as well. This is from uh, LouRockwell.com. And again, I'm reporting these things because this is a slippery slope. This is, uh, this is all right in a row here, all very, very bad news. Swiss Bank refuses request to withdraw cash. The issue which has swept down the centuries and which will have to be fought sooner or later is the people versus the bank, Lord Acton. As reported on Zero Hedge over the weekend, there's a link, a Swiss pension fund manager calculated that he could save his clients a substantial amount of money by withdrawing cash from his fund's bank account which was yielding a negative interest return, again we explained what that was, and depositing the cash in an insured vault. Exercising his fiduciary responsibility, he notified his bank of an impending large withdrawal of CHF. The bank rebuffed the fund manager's request informing him, we are sorry, that within the time period specified, no solution corresponding to your expectations can't be found. What does that mean? It says one banking expert argues that the bank's action is mostly definitely not legal because the pension fund holds a site account which gives the holder the right to withdraw cash on demand. You think you can get your cash out whenever? No, you can't. It says the president of the pension funds association, uh, it's, it's ASIP, Hamps Peter Conrad sees in this incident the hand of the Swiss National Bank, which wants to discourage the hoarding of cash as a means of circumventing negative interest rates. In other, way, in other words, they don't want you to keep your money safe. They want you to have to put it in the bank and have to pay them to do it. That's why you shouldn't bank. According to the National Bank, there has therefore recommended the banks to approach withdrawal demands in a restrictive manner. In other words, telling you when you can get your money and how much of it you can have if you're stupid enough to put it into a bank. As Hans Giger, Professor Emeritus at the University of Zurich points out, while the, N the Swiss National Bank may issue derivatives to the banks in the collective interest of the Swiss economy, it is not allowed to influence the contract between a bank and a pension fund. 
The banks themselves are responsible for how they act on the directives. That even a Swiss bank should, on its own hook, refuse cash payment to a holder of a demand deposit should not be surprising. As Mary Rothbard has shown, fractional reserve banks have uh, their inception, have continually convinced, or con excuse me, convened to restrict cash payments to the depositors either by lobbying government for legal suspension of payment or by adopting a quasi or extra legal, that is illegal, methods of discouraging withdrawals. Indeed, this was the case for both Scottish and U.S. banks during their repressive era, which was known as free banking. So you've got banks telling you when you can get your money out, how much of it you can get, where you can use it at. They want to know where you've used it. They want to know what you've done with it. Why would you put your banks in and, 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 and put your money in a bank? Interest rates have never been worse than they are right now. That should also be painfully obvious. Right? This is uh, another story of dealing with money real quick. In the Daily Sheeple, IRS seizes $107,000 from business owner for making cash deposits. Friends, if you, if you listen to this story, the stories I'm doing right now, and you ever put your money in a bank again, then nobody should ever feel sorry for you because you're an idiot. I mean, source after source after source says in recent years, America's absurd civil forfeiture laws have been facing heavy criticism from the public, especially for the effect that they have on small businesses that deal in cash, which is their right to do so. If you withdraw or deposit more than $10,000 into your bank account, your bank has to report it to the government. And if you do the same with less than $10,000, and the law doesn't state how much exactly, they accuse you of trying to avoid the law. When that happens, you can say goodbye to every penny you own. So you, if you put in more than ten grand, you're going to get popped. And if you put in less than ten grand, they might decide that you're doing it just to get around the ten grand law and take your money anyway. In other words, uh, hello, ancient Rome. Lyndon McLean learned this the hard way when the IRS confiscated one hundred and seven thousand seven hundred and two dollars from his business account, which is why you don't bank. He runs a convenience store in North Carolina, which, as you can imagine, deals heavily in cash. Being a convenience store, which was robbed at a higher rate than other businesses, it's not a good idea to have thousands of dollars lying around. It's safer to make frequent small deposits. No, it's safer to put the money elsewhere. Despite how logical this would appear to a normal person, the IRS took this money, and now it's up to him to prove his innocence. So much for the innocent until proven guilty. That doesn't make any sense. Because if he had the money stashed and said that it was taken to a bank, then they're either going to believe him or they're going to shoot him. If he really did put the money in the bank, his story would be the same, in which case they would either believe him or shoot him. So the bank is not needed even for this. Just enough sense to know what a hiding place is and a lie is. Good Lord. What makes this case stand out from so many others is that the, de the Department of Justice has recently changed their policy on civil forfeiture to prevent this from happening to cash businesses. Unfortunately, the IRS field agents have yet to comply with this new policy. No, because they want to steal money. And then you have to pay court fees and lawyer costs to prove that you're innocent. That's when you counter sue. That's what you do. But again, your money's tied up forever. We're going to move on before we get to uh, the dumb D and some of the other things planned. Um, move on to some uh, common sense gun news here. Gunman's rampage was stopped by concealed carry Uber driver. This is uh, Adam Salazar Infowars. A driver for the pseudo taxi service Uber is being hailed as a hero after he single handedly put a stop to an erratic gunman's rampage using his own concealed firearm. Once again, guns concealed saving lives, which they do more often than they take them, at least innocent life. Last Friday around noon, a driver for the company observed a small group of people walk by his vehicle as he sat waiting in traffic at a Chicago intersection. This is uh, dated 420, by the way. The 47-year-old driver, who has not been named in reports, Next saw 22-year-old Everardo 
Costadillo began firing rounds at a crowd on the sidewalk. What a nice guy. Prompting the driver to pull his own concealed weapon, which he was legally permitted to have. The driver fired at uh, Castudio six times, hitting him in the lower back, thigh, knee, and shin, according to police. Preventing a bloodbath, might I add. Police arriving at the scene found Castudio lying on the ground, bleeding at a weapon near him. It says the driver was acting in self-defense. And in the defense of others, the Cook County Assistant State Attorney Barry Quinn said in a statement, and he is right. Uber spokesman Jen Mullen couldn't yet comment on the driver's actions, except to say that drivers are required to abide by local, state, and federal handgun laws, which, uh, you know, fair enough. Uh, you could argue that the Second Amendment overrides all of that, and I would agree. The driver was still employed with the company as of last night, reports CBS Chicago, as he should be. He should be given the key to the city. It says the city of Chicago has seen a drastic decrease in crime, including robberies, burglaries, and motor vehicle thefts since the state began issuing concealed carry permits. Most of the violence there is gang-related and oftentimes uh, contrary to uh, what you would imagine. Unfortunately, it is... Uh, young black youths killing other young black youths and uh, again that's that's not good to report i'm not happy to say it but if you factor those out and then you look at the other kind of crimes that have gone down since concealed carry has gone there and you'll find that uh, it has made a substantial difference and saved a lot of lives in more ways than one friend you're listening to the correct views uh, i don't know if i'm ever going to open up a facebook for this show again i may or i may not i took it down and now on Tumblr, so if you're going to go to Tumblr, look us up. Also, remember, friends, check this out. And this is uh, stickers. These are stickers from Sticker Junkie. Go to StickerJunkie.com and let them know you want really cool stickers like uh, Passing Time, the band has, the band that I'm in. Check these out. You, you can get stickers that look like this. What you do, you go to StickerJunkie.com. Put in the comment line that you heard about it from uh, the correct views. And you're going to get a discount and you're going to get amazing looking stickers, I promise you. Friends, moving on, this story brought to you by Change Transportation. If you're within a 50-mile radius of uh, Canton, Ohio, price match your cab and transportation services with Change Transportation, which you can find on Facebook, and uh, I bet you he'll price match it and beat it. Environmentalists cause California drought to protect a fish. Yes, it says, California, the place where liberalism is wreaking world-world havoc on the people. How, how many times have you heard that man-made global warming is affecting the climate? Well, that's not true. Actually, it's the environmentalists. This is from the Federalist Papers, Russ Helper. We've reported, and there's a link here, about the severe drought in California, the worst in decades. It is believed to be partially man-made because of California's extreme environmental regulations that are literally flushing fresh water out to sea. Now, a new report by CNS News reveals the shocking reason for the drought. Are you ready for this? This is why I was uh, always quick to say, and still am, that uh, Jello Biafra of the Dead Kennedys was so right when he wrote California Uber Alice about this bonehead governor. Do you realize Jerry Brown has been governor since the early 80s? off and on. This is his third term, and every time he gets in, he does something more boneheaded than he did prior. One of the worst politicians in American history. Since California Democratic bonehead, worthless, dead Kennedys was right, Governor Jerry Brown imposed water restriction on the state's residents on April 1st. This is dated April 20th. The people have suddenly become interested in what government officials have described as one of the most severe droughts on record. But for months, Republican Assemblywoman Shannon Grove, who represents part of Kern County, the second largest agricultural sector in the country, has been trying to get the word out about how Environmental Protection Agency, that be the EPA that Ron Paul wisely wanted to get rid of, how their regulations apparently are literally draining water into the sea for the sake of a three-inch fish. Just clone the damn fish. I put together this short video to explain the real cause of California's water shortage problem, which everyone is paying attention to now that the governor has imposed water restrictions upon the entire state, Grove wrote on her Facebook page on April 3rd. 
the day she reported the video she first published back in September. Share it with your friends who need to know the truth, Grove wrote. The truth is that the Endangered Species Act and its effort to protect the tiny delta smelt has taken water away from farmers. That's right, the worst drought in a century in California is because environmentalists want to be sure that a three-inch fish the Delta smelt has enough water to swim in. Meanwhile, California leads the state in wanting to clone. CNS News reveals the truth. All in all, California farmers followed about 500,000 acres of land this year, said the Wall Street Journal in June of 14. <clears throat> but here's the thing. Much of this land has been productive and had the state stored up more water from wet years and not flushed 800,000 acre feet into the San Francisco Bay last winter and an additional 445,000 acre feet this spring to safeguard the endangered Delta smelt. You can't grow a Delta smelt by the thousands in in captivity to save this fish it's three inches you can't grow a three inch fish in captivity what's wrong with you people thirsty that's enough for roughly three million households to live on do you understand that people for enough water for three million households was sent into the ocean during a drought and it was used to irrigate 600,000 acres of land, it could have been, I should say. According to the University of Cali Davis, this represents the greatest water loss ever seen for California agriculture and resulted in the loss of 17,000 seasonal and part-time jobs. And people wonder why I wear a Dead Kennedys t-shirt. It says, this policy is the height of irresponsibility. Definitely not because he's a greenie. That let me down. Because, again, the greens are part of what led to this, so maybe not California Uberalis. These extremists have no clue how many lives they are ruining due to their fanaticism. But California's farmers know all too well just how damaging these policies are to California's food supply and the food supply for many other states as well. As CNS News quotes one who personally knows the problem now exists. Grove went to talk to farmers about the drought, it says, including Larry Starr, a third generation in his family to the work, the land, S-T-A-R-H. It's funny how back in the day, drought was, you know, you would see con dry conditions and you'd deal with it, Starr said. But now you got added conditions, and I don't think that we can blame the weather for it. Today's drought, I think, is more politically driven, as in uh, to send the water into the ocean then weather related star said and added that he doesn't remember these kinds of problems until congress passed the endangered species act in 1973 until that happened we were fine star said we got through all of our droughts with no issues yeah because you weren't sending enough water for three million people to live on into the ocean shazam sparky it says, all California, the place where liberalism is wreaking real havoc on the people who live there and voted for it. Thank you, Governor Moonbeam, for showing the world in real terms just how silly and dangerous the environmentalist movement is for all of us humans. That, that story should be front page news. Enough water for three million people was flushed into the ocean during the during a dry season, during a drought. And now, of course, they're dying for it. You can't water your lawn. Why? Because you watered a fish. Absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, more on this global warming thing before we get to the dum of the day. Although, of course, you could argue that uh, all of this is, in fact, a dum for the day. Daily Caller. Skeptical climate scientist dismantles Dem lawmakers' alarmism. In other words, proving... Uh, that man-made war global warming is a lie and just literally burying the idiocy that is being uh, dismantled by this Democrat here. Listen to this. This is uh, Michael Bastish. Gotta watch how you say that, don't you? 
Governor, uh, excuse me, Georgia Tech climate scientist Judith Curry completely dismantled criticisms from a Democratic congresswoman that her testimony was full of errors when it came to the seriousness of global warming. Curry, a noted global warming skeptic who is correct, was recently targeted by Democrats in an investigation trying to tie scientists who disagree with the White House on global warming to funding from fossil fuel interests. I found myself deeply troubled by Curry's unwritten and oral testimony, Representative Don Bayer, a Virginia Democrat, said during a hearing Thursday, I found the testimony just full of internally conflicting facts and opinions. <clears throat> An almost total conflict with anything I've read over the past 15 years, Byer said, after listing off reasons that he thought Curry's testimony was wrong. But Curry wasn't about to let Byer lambaste her testimony and responded to the Democrats' confused rebuttal. This is absolutely beautiful. This whole issue of human-caused climate change is a relatively recent notion, Curry said in a House hearing on President Barack Obama's pledge to cut carbon monoxide emissions, in other words, raise your energy prices and shut down coal plants to fight global warming, which isn't happening due to coal plants. It says climate is always changing and it's going to change in the future. The issue is how much of a change is caused by humans, Curry correctly said. That's why it's the correct views. We don't know what the 21st century holds. <clears throat> climate change may be really unpleasant and that may happen independently of anything that humans do. Exactly. Climate change may be really unpleasant, and that may happen independently of anything that humans do. That includes driving your car. All science is contention. We continue to learn. We must be humble at all times about what we know. But it seems to me very much sticking your head in the sand, Bayer reported, adding that debating over which year is the hottest was silly, since 10 of the last 15 years were record warm years. The climate has been warming since the 1700s, okay, since the end of the Little Ice Age, Curry explained. We don't know what's causing the warming in the 18th century and in the 19th century. It's not attributed to humans. Again, there were no power plants back then. There were no cars. They were still warming up as much as it is now. So there are other things going on in the climate system that have been contributing to warming over several centuries, Curry said. We can't blame all of this on humans, and we don't know how all of this is going to play out in the 21st century. We just don't know. Bayer then tried to switch tactics and compare Democrats' advocacy for carbon dioxide regulations to former Vice President Dick Cheney arguing for the use of an enhanced interrogation on the 1% chance that it could prevent Al-Qaeda from getting a nuclear weapon. And we are going to do nothing because there's a greater than 1% chance of climate change, Breyer said before being interrupted by Curry. There is nothing in my testimony that says that we do nothing, Curry said. What is being proposed is ineffective. It's not going to do anything, even if the U.S. is successful at meeting 80% reductions by 2050. This is going to reduce warming by about a tenth of a degree centigrade. It's not going to do anything. I'm saying we need to acknowledge and that we need to rethink how we're going to deal with the risks of the future climate change, whether it's caused by humans or natural processes. And it is, of course, caused by natural processes. More proof that man-made global warming is a lie. You'll find that all over my channel. Uh, hopefully by now you all know it and you're sharing it and educating other people. That brings us, in fact, to the dum D of the day. And uh, how many of you know uh, the dunce cap of the month just went out? And uh, this here, friends, revolves around a selfie. That's right. You can take a selfie. I hate that word. Truth revolt. Selfie-taking idiots destroy priceless Italian statue. Oh my God, the dum D of the day. Two idiot tourists shattered a priceless statue link in Italy when they attempted to snap a selfie of themselves. The pair, who had been unidentified, could face criminal charges. The idiots climbed onto the marble statue of Hercules at Legia di Militi Palace. A piece of the statue's crown collapsed under the weight of the men, causing it to fall on the floor and shatter into pieces, according to Milan's Curie della Sera newspaper. 
The statue is regarded as a symbol of the city, huh? It reminds me of the uh, the Inspector uh, Clouseau instance where he's trying to he's got a he's got a, a flail a, a, a stuck to his hand a knight's flail, and he's trying to kill a bee, and he hits a uh, a piano, and the piano falls to the floor, and the maid of the house looks at Peter Sellers' character Inspector Clouseau and she goes, "That's a priceless piano," and he goes. Not anymore. That is exactly what this reminds me of. It says police, but yeah, the symbol of the city. Not anymore. Police believe they have identified the pair responsible for the destruction. Experts will be brought in to determine if the statue can be repaired. There have been other incidents around Italy involving tourists defacing historical landmarks and taking selfies. In April, a Japanese woman was charged by police after she wrote her name and date on the dome of the Florence Cathedral. She used an eyeliner pencil on the marble, but she did not cause any permanent damage. A month before that incident, two women from California, we reported on this, were arrested for carving their initials into the Colosseum in Rome. After carving the 8-inch high letters, the women posed for a selfie. In 2013, an American tourist, listen to these dumdies, upset locals when he accidentally snapped the finger off a 1,600-year-old statue of the Virgin Mary at Museo dell'Opera del Duomo, the Museum of the Works of the Cathedral in Florence. And lastly, a 55-year-old man from New Fairfield, Connecticut, another American, lucky us, was attempting to compare his finger to the one on the statue when the digit broke off. The hell is wrong with these people, he writes. Friends, they're dumdies. That's why they got the dumdie of the day. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for The Media Speaks. Um, share the video. If you want to donate to the show, you can do so at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Uh, I guess it's going to take like nine or ten days for the cable to get here from California, but we'll have uh, low-def people can see it. Low-def, high-def. Uh, there's going to be graphics up behind me. It's going to look really good. And it happens because people donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Thank you for listening, friends. Good night. God bless.